Hello and welcome to the impressions video of Sword Coast Legends. Um, obviously this game hasn't released yet and it's coming out on Tuesday next week. Um, and our NDA doesn't lift until Monday so um, we can't actually do any review content for you guys. But I just wanted to show you um, a little bit of the more multiplayer aspect of the game. Didn't want to show any campaign um, for spoiler reasons. Um, but this game does feature a sort of... Um, a build your own adventure um, module setting mode sort of thing that you can do um, and so I'll show you guys some of that and um, some of the things that I've noticed um, this is a game by Endspace um, and it's published by the guys who made um, Warframe um, and so far it's, it's okay one thing I have noticed is that um, if you tab out of the game um, all of your other programs seem to lag a lot I don't know whether that's because it's a beta build and it's not quite polished up yet um, as you can see in the bottom right and on a pre-release build um, so yeah that's a little bit strange but we'll head on over to the um, to the video options um, 4k is supported um, actually looks pretty good on 4k I, I must say and um, the difference between 4k and 1080p is um, well you can tell which is which is nice that's what I bought a 4k monitor for um, and of course we've got all of these magical video settings decent amount of video settings not ludicrous amounts but enough for all those tweakers who um who would definitely like to see that obviously i've got anti and turned off because of 4k um and the game actually plays pretty well i have to say um performance figures um are looking good on the offset um so all in all pretty good around this section um so basically you can do the dungeon master uh, option which is basically you dump a load of monsters and design a dungeon around some enemy heroes whether they're AI or player controlled um, and you just play the dungeon master and you progress the story and you write it which is which is really cool um, basically this is a modern shinier version of Neverwinter Nights um, if anyone still plays the original original Neverwinter Nights Shadows of Undren Tide and all that stuff you'll probably know that the game was like you know is still popular today because of the campaign modules people could make you could make your own campaigns you could make your own stories the whole lot and it meant that lots and lots of people stay playing the game the multiplayer scene was quite vibrant and just in general it's what made the game as good as it was aside from the fact that it had a great single player campaign story and all of that stuff and it was just good core com core mechanics um obviously the player thing um this is where you get to select um whether you're going to do a dungeon crawl, which is literally you go into a camp and you've got basic vendors um, and you can buy some stuff from the vendors, sell some stuff, and then you can build a dungeon yourself uh, very quickly, like a skirmish mode sort of thing, um, which is quite cool. It's very good for those who can't be bothered to just sort of dedicate a few hours of their time or weeks for the main campaign um, and just want to sort of level up their character and the reason you might want to do that is because the what the way that they've done this game and I, I really quite like this is um you make a character um, and that character is persistent across all of your games so what happens is um i've made this character um and i can use it in each and every game i play so i can do the full story mode level up and have equipment from that i can then jump into the modules um custom modules that other players have created download those and use the same character or in the dungeon crawl i can use the character that i've leveled up um, and you can join other multiplayer games with that character so it's persistent across everywhere and it's actually quite cool because everything is based around this character and you can grow it as you like i, I have to admit i quite like that um, before you get onto this screen you do get to design your character yourself um which the character creation is reasonably decent. It's quite detailed. It's not quite Skyrim, but it's close, very close. Um, obviously, the graphical fidelity of this in comparison to Skyrim is not that close. But there is plenty of um, plenty of plenty of customization options for your character, and there's a fair few classes and all of that kind of stuff. And you can even give them backstories. It's, it's quite good. Um, so what I want to do is I just want to quickly jump into a um, a dungeon crawl for you guys. There's no one online at all. Um, this weekend is the weekend when um, the head start access starts for everyone who pre-ordered the game. Um, I've had access for four weeks now. Um, and every weekend, um, reviewers finally get people to play with. Um, you can, We can, of course, talk to developers to play a game with them. Um, but on the weekend, certain players can access the game. And so I've been playing single dungeon crawls mainly. Um, apart from on the weekends and joining other players. However, I did see my first bot um, last weekend, which was a bit disappointing. Um, someone called Ranger X, and they were XP farming, which kind of 
kind of defeats the point of a game if you're just going to leave macros and scripting to play it for you. So we'll jump in a dungeon crawl and we'll start our own. Uh, go for normal. Easy is actually surprisingly difficult for a level 1 character. Everyone who just starts off, do not go onto normal mode. You will not survive. Um, you can, of course, click normal mode on this dungeon crawl thing because when you set up a dungeon, um, which is done here, you can set the difficulty of it here. Um, I'll change that down to easy because my character is level 1 and I have absolutely no hope of um, defeating anyone. So as you can see, it's just me. Um, other people can join this game and do my adventure with me, and I've got a couple of uh, vendors, weapon, armor, and um, potion. Um, except we're going to need a couple of AI, so we're going to bring in the cleric, bring in the rogue, and because I am a fighter, we're going to bring in the wizard. Um, I've designed this character to be as tanky as possible, however, she's only level 1, so her tanking capabilities are limited. I have customized these... Um, bars because they're a bit muddled up defaultly which is slightly annoying um, and another thing that you'll notice is I'm clicking and dragging on this except it's not moving what you have to do is stay hovered over it for a while and then it'll move so you can see if I just do this it's it's just not working and you have to wait and then drag it across um, and the inventory is very similar um, the scroll button scroll wheel just wasn't working for me the other day um, it is now thankfully um, anyway I've sold all of my gear um, pretty much and just kept some of my nice items. I did actually find some reasonably good um, scimitars on a multiplayer game I was playing the other day so that's kind of cool. Um, and of course you have the um, the full host of uh, RPG stuff so you can equip everything under the sun in every slot known to mankind. You've got all the stats and modifiers and everything um, and of course you have all of, just so much data for every RPG lover that this this is a game that is basically for the hardcore RPG player um, well it, at least it's designed to be um, catering towards those sort of people um, but you know if you are um, a relatively casual player it is very much open um, to those people as well and you've got tons of stuff um, nicely enough you can sort of understand uh, a lot of thing that old school rpgs tend to do um is hide things um like i, I remember making a black guard in neverwinter nights it was very difficult because um you would have to take like a spring step in order to unlock whirlwind in order to unlock some other stuff and you'd have to take certain stats in order to unlock black guard and it wasn't very wasn't very open in how you were supposed to do things um which is fair enough because that's just, you know, that's just the way old school RPGs are. One thing that really annoys me is every time you click, your character talks. Um, this needs to be stopped. It needs to be stopped because you click a lot. And they talk a lot in combat too. And it gets a little bit old very, very quickly. So I'm just going to quickly whack down this volume before we jump into a dungeon I will very quickly make. Um... The dungeon uh, creator is kind of cool. It's not as detailed as some people might like. Um, turn that down as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump on here. So what you can do is you can name your dungeon. I'll just leave it as Bandit Caves for now. Um, and you can assign main quests. Um, last time I did a boss. And we'll do a boss again. I have to admit some of the bosses are quite interesting. Um, I did the... Demon Web Terror, I believe. Oh, Beholder. Yes, please. Um, and then you can set your reward. Uh, I would like a random piece of armor because my shield is currently a crappy. Should this quest... Yes, it should reward me with gold. God damn it. Um, so that's our boss. Um, and now we get to choose a floor. We can add tons and tons and tons of floors, as much as you like. Um, and then, obviously... Add the boss to the last floor. Um, select your main creature set. We'll go for undead. We'll, we'll go all out undead, I think. Um, encounter difficulty set to easy. And then we can even change the lighting and the atmosphere. Um, so it's, it's, it's not massively in-depth, but it is, it's a good creation tool for people to just quickly jump in, make themselves a nice little, um, a nice little encounter, um, and then you can sort of deal with it. We'll go for simple just so that you guys can... Um, can see it all. We'll go into the catacombs to give it more 
undeady feel and then we'll accept that and then all you do is jump in here and enter your dungeon which will then be gen randomly generated it's actually pretty cool um obviously the simple easy encounters probably only take about 10 to 15 minutes which is quite nice it's a good jump in play game and of course there's a full campaign mode for those that do want to spend hours well weeks basically uh, playing a nice old school rpg um game obviously if you're the kind of person that likes to create massively in-depth um sort of games there is that ability to do that i've downloaded a couple of maps that people have made online um not too long ago um, and some people have made some pretty interesting stuff i have to say um a lot of it is surprisingly surprisingly well done turn this all down because it's so loud there we go all right so we'll go in here Aim for that guy first, and we'll pause combat here. So we can have two zombies and some skeletons. So what we want to do is we'll get our lady two buffers up, please. You buff. This guy can throw daggers at people, so we'll probably get him to throw a dagger at that guy. Uh, you fire a fireball at that guy. He also has magic weapons, and we'll do a shield bash on him so he doesn't... There we go. Um, and then, basically, a lot of this game is going to involve um, a lot of pausing and a lot of strategy. Um, there is no use you sort of jumping in a game and just going, Oh, right, okay, everyone click here, kill. It will work to a certain degree, but you'll very, very, very quickly find that your entire party um, will get slaughtered. Um, by some of the more difficult mobs. Um, don't be surprised when you see the boss and discover it's actually more difficult than it seems. Um, ooh, a vampire thrall. You, stab him. Um, some of the... I mean, there's quite a few bosses. The, the thing I quite like about... Um, about the fact that the dungeon customization is relatively simple is you can jump into a game and as a new player when I first saw the boss it was relatively simple but at the same time you thought oh wow that is pretty interesting and it was you know it was awe inspiring um, obviously the game feels a little bit um, feels a touch rough around the edges I think um, but that's probably just down to it being beta I think on release, this game is potentially going to sort of mature with age. Uh, this is very much a game that is reliant upon, you know, players advancing the game with their own content and giving them the feedback that they need to say, hey, you know, I like this um, thing in Neverwinter Nights and th that went pretty well. I'd like this in this game. I think this would be improved with this. You know, it is a, it's a very, very good um, basis um, for a dungeon crawler at the moment. Um, ah, that's not the boss. Oh my. So we'll quickly drop that down. So yeah, I have to say I'm... It's difficult to get into straight away as a reviewer because there isn't much in terms of a tutorial. Um, you'll very quickly find that you'll get really irritated by the constant incessant whining of your um, companions, which I'm hoping uh, will be just... Oh, damn, one of my guys died already. Well, you're tanky. So, you go heal him. Hmm, this is more difficult than anticipated. Right, now, you need to heal yourself. Alright, I think we're just going to YOLO it. There we go. And that guy was a pain in the ass. Oh, I don't think he was even a boss. I think he was just a difficult mob. Oh, he's on fire. So we need to get rid of that from him. Uh, 
and also healing. Oh, buggery. I haven't actually 100% died yet. Um, although I get the impression you pretty much just end up back in camp with very little health um, and have to start start over, pretty much. Now, am I able to level up yet? Yes! I have leveled up. Character. I have no points available. Oh no, I'm still level 1. Never mind, ignore me. That's disappointing. I still haven't leveled up yet, because um, I literally just um, started this character the other day. Uh, after a great deal of mucking about with everything, pretty much. Quickly drop a here. Oh, I can't drop it here. Oh, and I spent 3,000 gold on potions. Potions are surprisingly expensive. You, you, get over here. I mean, at the moment it's lacking a lot of punch, I'm feeling. Uh... But I feel like a fair amount of RPGs, old school RPGs, are like that. Um, at the moment, I feel like I'm going to enjoy it a whole lot more once there's more players to play with. Um, managing four of these units is a bit of a task. Um, so I can imagine this being a bit more of an entertaining sort of 15 minute encounter if I got to play it with people. Um, oh, what's this? Have I killed the boss? Defeat Beholder? Well, where is he? Pretty sure we've gone through the entire dungeon. Oh, no, we haven't. There's a door right here. Whoops. Okay, so this is probably going to be the boss room. Boss rooms are usually enormous, and they look very much like a boss room. Um, I remember, the f funnily enough, because I'm not that old, unfortunately, um, the first boss beholder I've ever seen was um, was in Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance when me and my brother were playing that. Um, These are actually surprisingly more difficult in comparison to um, to the bandit cave I did earlier. Gotta say. Hey! At last. I'll deal with that after I've defeated this boss. If I defeat this boss. Alright, let's just get you the potion down your neck. Um... Potion down your name. I probably shouldn't waste potions, they're quite costly. This has to be the boss room. Yeah, this is the boss room. There we go. Okay, so he paralyzes people. What a dick. You throw that. You. Yeah. Whatever that is. And you. Fireballs. Oh, hang on a second. Oh, damn. I need to remove that from... Charm. You don't want to be doing that. This boss is going to be surprisingly challenging, I feel. Especially considering it is, unfortunately... You're not... You're fine. You're f oh, you're not fine. I'll just send her over here. Currently it feels a bit disjointed, although I think that's entirely my fault for not being a very good player. So, I wouldn't necessarily blame the game for my incompetence. Make a bloody potion. Attack him! Oh. Have I... I think I might... Ah, he's weak to frost. I think I might have broken the AI. Oh, there you go. This is your uh, this is your impressions. I literally have no idea what's going on. This 
Well, this is going to make it substantially easier. Ah, oh, this is a bit disappointing. But at least you guys saw this in the impressions, at the very least. I mean, this is only the second boss I've actually fought on this character, so... It's a bit worrying when the second boss you ever fight bugs out horrendously. This would have actually been a pretty difficult fight, because this guy has a lot of health. What is he doing? What is happening? What is happening? Fire those at him. Yeah, magic missiles, bitch. This is a bit disappointing. Also, it's worth noting that um, characters, thankfully, um, auto-cast if you're not selecting them, which is nice. Alright, so we'll jump out of here and quickly do a quick level up and then we'll end it there. Because after all, this is just an impression and not a review in the slightest. Um, and the game is not finished, of course. But of course, you can check out our um, our full review, um, along with a video um, review summary on Thursday next week. Um, I know the game's releasing on Tuesday, but unfortunately, I do have a, um, a schedule to keep to. Three remaining ability points. What shall I get? I feel like I need defences. Requires shield level 3. Requires shield level 5. Right. Hells a spear attached to a chain. Oh. That sounds familiar. Archery, skills and proficiencies. Already have all these proficiencies, apparently. Uh, don't need lockpicking. I'll have a lockpicker. Battlemaster. Oh, that seems useful. More of a supportive role. And... Hmm... Have a look at everything else first. Uh, stabs viciously. Nothing's really leaping out to me. I'm a shield bearer after all. I should probably go for something a bit more supporty. This additional health thing seems a hell of a lot more useful than uh, doing more damage. Let's have a look. I'm not liking the fact that I have to randomly... There we go. Anyway, yes, yeah, so um, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this has given you a, a reasonable insight into what um, these little dungeon modules are like. Um, I'll give you a quick show of... Save it first. Um, I'll give you a quick show of the, um, the modules you can download. Hopefully. If I can remember how to do it. It's been a while. I can't actually remember where you download modules from. Ah, here we go. Yeah. Oh, what? Oh, there we go. Yeah. So obviously you can download modules, you can play them, you can rate them. Um, I'm guessing one of the top downloaded modules is potentially a... Oh, no. No. Yeah. So this, this is exactly what is going to make the game excellent, is the people making modules like this. Um, so yeah, probably for the review, I'll, um, I might cover a little bit of the campaign as well as one of these modules. Um, because, you know, people put in a hell of a lot of effort into these sorts of modules. Um, I remember some of the best things I ever did in Neverwinter Nights was basically custom made content. Um, so yeah, um, join us next week on, not next week, sorry, this week on Thursday um for our weekly review and for our full review video as well um, and hopefully you've enjoyed this see you guys next time